Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to save something to the browser's local storage. And that could then, in another course, pick up some information about the learner. And this really is a way to be able to save data from one course to another course if you need to be able to do that. Now the key here though is that it is just for that person and not across like a database or across several users or even across several different machines. So it is for a very specific type of use case, but I wanna show you how it's done and how you can take advantage of it. My name is Jeff Bat with Learning Dojo and let's go ahead and dive in here. So I have two storyline files because I wanna be able to create two separate courses. The first course will have a score here. So I created a variable called score and right now it has a default value of zero. What I want the learner to be able to do is to push in and create their own score. So I'm gonna have them enter in their own score and it's going to push it to the local storage. And then when they close out that course, what I want to do is open up another course, which is going to be this one right here. By default, it's gonna be zero, but when I click the button, it's gonna pick up the information from the local storage and update this variable. Now I could have that happen right as soon as the page loads and so the learner doesn't even know, but it is something to keep in mind. So you could even push like the user's information, like their name or something like that to local storage and pick up on it for future use is one of the, another use case for it. I'm gonna go ahead and go into here and this is going to require some code and all of my JavaScript code for Storyline can be found on my website if you go to learningdojo.ninja slash JavaScript dash snippets. Now this one I have placed, you can't really download this project file yet. I may include these pages in a project file, but I have to have two separate project files, so it may be something different. But it is past 1.2, slide 1.2, and it is something called local storage. Now there's really three parts that I'm going to go ahead and add here. This first part is going to push the information to the local storage. The second part is going to get the information in the other project from local storage. And then this last part is optional, but that is going to go ahead and clear the information. If you ever wanted to clear it from local storage, you can do that as well. So the first part is pushing it. Second part is getting it. Third part is clearing it. So let's go ahead and walk through that. So the first part, I'm gonna go ahead and click on copy code. If you're not a coder, you can just copy that. I'll show you the important parts to update if needed, but if you are not a coder and you don't wanna dive into the description, you can skip through that part here. But what I'm gonna do right here is go ahead and just add a new trigger. Now in the dropdown box, I'll select this and go down to execute JavaScript and select this button right here and paste in my JavaScript here. So what is it doing? It's getting the player like we've seen before. It's getting the variable when this button is clicked, it's getting the variable from Storyline. I've talked about variables. I've talked about how to get variables inside of other videos. I'll link those at the end of this video if you want to explore more of that. And then what it's doing is it's pushing to local storage. So anytime you see local storage, it's going to talk to this database inside of this browser and it's going to keep track of that inside of a database. So when you push something into a database, you have to give it a key and a value. You have to give it a name and whatever value of that name is going to be, it's going to be. So in this case, we're gonna set an item and we're going to, inside of quotes, give it the name of scores. It does have to be inside of quotes. You can name it whatever you want. Just make sure that there's no spaces. You're using camel case as well. And then it's updating the score. So the only thing, if you're not a coder, that you would need to change is the variable name right here. If you have a different variable name inside of Storyline, you just need to make sure that you're grabbing whatever variable you want to store as part of local storage. That's the only thing you need to update. Just make sure the quotes are the same, and then you can push that into local storage. So that's pretty much it. So if I come in here and click OK, the only thing it's going to do is just push it into the local storage. So we need to publish this to the web, and I'm gonna publish this to my desktop here. So let's go up here to my desktop, then I'm gonna select the folder and then hit publish. Now while that's publishing out, let's go ahead and work on the next project. So I have two projects pulled up inside a storyline. So what we need to do is go grab the information from the local storage. So we can do that when this button is clicked and it looks like our other one finished publishing. Great, we'll come back to that. 
but let's come into here and select this button. And we're gonna add on and execute JavaScript trigger. So same one that we did before. And then what I'm going to do is come into the JavaScript, go into my website, and I'm gonna copy the middle section. If I copy the middle section, I can go ahead and paste that here. So what this is doing is it's creating our own variable inside of Storyline. And in fact, probably the best way to do that is by adding let here instead of var. And then we're gonna go grab that information. So instead of setting the information, we're going to grab the information here and we're gonna grab the thing called score. We don't know what the value is going to be. We're just gonna grab whatever the value is from there and we're gonna update it with this variable. So now it's stored inside of a variable called stored score. Now what I do here is I add a condition and I say if the stored score is not equal to null, if for some reason we never set that information, I don't want the code to break. I don't want an error to be thrown. So if this is not null, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to update, I'm gonna get the player, and then I'm going to set the score inside of our storyline course to, and you do have to have a parse integer because we need to, it's stored as like a string, but we need to convert it into an integer. And so we're converting the number back into an integer. If it was a, a name, I probably wouldn't need to do this part, but because this is a number and we're pushing it back into a number, I need to parse the integer of whatever is stored from that local storage. So if I am not a coder, again, I'm trying to emphasize if you're not a coder, the only thing you would need to change is whatever you named it inside of your local storage. So if you named it something else besides score, you would just need to change that. That's pretty much it. So everything else here could stay the same. You could leave it as stored score, or if you update this, you will need to update that. And then also, sorry, one more thing, you do need to update whatever the variable is inside of this project that you're pushing the information back to, which my variable that I'm pushing information back to is also score inside of this project. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and then I'm gonna publish this, and it's not gonna clear anything yet, but I'm gonna publish this and show you what's happening here. So let's publish this also to my desktop here. So I'm gonna select my desktop, hit select, and then hit publish. Now on my desktop, I'm gonna preview, first of all, this first course. So I'll double click on story.html, and then let's update it with 80%. So there's my score, it updates automatically here, but I need to push it to local storage. Now I don't have any alerts or anything like that. I'd probably want to add an alert in order to show the learner, okay, or to prompt the learner that something has happened. If not, it could be perceived as an error that something's not working. I click this button, nothing happened. So that is just something to keep in mind. But it was stored inside of local storage. So what I can do is pull open that other course. So double clicking on story.html, all I have to do is click on get score from storage and then boom, it updated my score automatically. So you could, and the, really the reason why I'm creating this video is because you could store some information inside, and these are like cookies and, and local storage information. This is like what websites do all the time. So you could push that information to uh, the learner's device. And so when this course loads the next time, it automatically has some data. And that just helps load the, the course a lot faster as well. And it's a way to share data from course to course on the user's device itself. So if this is applicable for you, great. If not, um, you can go ahead and jump onto some of my other videos. I'll link a couple of videos at the end of this video here if you wanna check out more about uh, JavaScript or something like that. Also, if you wanna check out more videos, you can head on over to my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out all previous blog posts covering anything learning development related. You can also download free templates, templates inside of Articulate Storyline 360 and XAPI templates. And you can also check out full courses covering everything from A to Z in Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 video. Also, if you like this video, head on over to my YouTube channel, click the like button, and subscribe to my channel, as well as hit the bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows me to continue to produce these videos for you to really help you become the best learning developer that you can be to really push the limits of learning development and to get more out of your courses and, and improve 
the courses for your learners as well. That's, that's my main goal here for this channel. Well, that's all I have for today. So thanks everyone. And I'll see you next time.